My name is Chris Adams. I'm the senior counselor at Central Hardin, and this is just some basic information we want to get to seniors and senior parents for this year, for the class of 2022. First thing, if you have any questions, you can reach me at the Central Hardin School, number 737-6800, my extension is 2714. You can also reach me by email, and that's chris.adams at hardin.kyschools.us. That is the easiest way to reach me as we are in and out of the office much of the time. That will be the best way to do that, and we will get a response back to you on there. For seniors, my website, which can be found on the central website, just go to the counseling department page, click on my name. There are several things on there, scholarships, open houses, different programs. All that's going to be listed on that web page. Also some pages for senior forms, which will be referenced later on, such as senior fact sheet and the college visit form. All those can be found on that web page. Just check the tabs on the left side and go to whichever tab for the information you're looking for on that. Students should also have the remind account codes right by now, and parents also. We do ask because of the limited accounts that we have from remind that you join only one remind account. For the parents, please make sure you join one of the parent reminds only. For the students, make sure you join one of the student reminds only on that, depending on which level of information you're wanting to get during the school year. All seniors should also have an invitation that they should have received to my Google Classroom, which will also be posting information on there. Your to-do list for this fall, first thing, look into retaking the ACT if you're going to be looking for scholarships or getting into colleges. You can also begin exploring different colleges, taking some college visits, the ones that you're interested in. Check their websites. You can schedule college visits through there. You can also attend college fairs. And I'll touch on when the college fair this year will be. That will be on September 20th. Make sure you're aware of different admission and scholarship deadlines for the different schools. Different types of schools and different parts in those schools have different deadlines that you have to do. For example, UK's early admission deadline is December 1st. Western Kentucky's Honors College usually ends sometime for their admission in late November, so make sure you're aware of the different deadlines you need on that. And also check and make sure your graduation credits are in line. You'll need to have 26 credits to graduate from Central Hardin this year. As far as scheduling, due to one-to-one -one scheduling, we don't plan on very many schedule changes. At this time, those schedule changes should be complete for trimester one. Due to our class sizes, there are not many elective changes that can even be allowed this year. So what you ask for is pretty much what you're going to get on those. However, if you do need to change a schedule for a certain class you need for graduation or for college admission, please make sure to let me know and send in a schedule change request. All seniors must complete English for A and B for graduation and must complete a math class during their senior year. Next for ACT, you need to register at www.act.org. There are no paper and pencil applications that you do in here in our office anymore, all those are done online. Next test date's coming up, the next one's September the 11th. For the October 23rd test, you need to register by September 17th. For the December 11th ACT test, you need to register by November the 5th. Seniors should plan to take the ACT no later than December of 2021 in order to meet scholarship deadlines and admission deadlines for the Kentucky colleges. ECT does sometimes host an ACT prep workshop. You can watch if we get anything on those workshops and we will get information out if they do that. You can also find online study resources at ACT.org and you can receive a fee waiver for up to two ACTs per year if you are on free or reduced lunch. As far as college fairs, our college fair this year, the Heartland Regional College Fair, will be held and this is a change at John Harden High School outside on September 20th, 20th from 6 to 8 p.m. Most all Kentucky colleges and several out-of-state schools will be there. There will also be some military branches there. This is a great time for seniors and our juniors if they're wanting to get information about college to visit with those college representatives. As right now, as at this point, we are not having any representatives come in the building. So this would be your best opportunity to meet with them. Again, that's September 20th at John Harden High School. As far as college visits, Central Harden allows up to three college visits between your junior and senior year combined. You can take a college visit that do not count as an absence from school. If you're requesting to use one of those college visit days, come by the counseling office and you must get the college visit form signed. We ask at least one week prior to the visit. On the college visits, after you get the form signed, you need to make sure someone from the college signs it as well. Students are responsible for any missed work and the visits should not be made during the last two weeks of, the, of each grading period. 
Again, make sure that you get that form to me before you leave. The forms are available on the website, on the, on the Senior Forms tab. Just download that. There are three pages to it. We need to make sure it's signed and filled out. And we want, again, it says two weeks. We want to make sure you get at least a week so we're aware that you're going. And in order to have the visit excused, the student must bring back the sheet signed by the college representative as well, and that goes to Mrs. Yates. We will be hosting a FAFSA day on October 21st during school. Actually, if we get a date on that one, we, if we get a change on that, we will let you know. We will be having that FAFSA day. This will be coming into the school. We'll have this from noon to 6, and you'll be able to come in with your parents if you have questions about completing your FAFSA. We'll have representatives here from Kia and also ECTC's financial aid department to help you with that. Remember, the FAFSA, you can start doing that on October the 1st. Different types of scholarships to be looking for. Academic scholarships from colleges and universities. Those will be completed sometime in December through in January. Local businesses, those usually start coming out after Christmas. Those will be where you want to check the web page on that as they come in. Those will come in from about Christmas through April for most of those local scholarships. You also need to check on your keys money on kia.com. So you can check through there, see where your keys money stands this year. That is updated at the end of June when the district reports all data from this year. And you can also check some of the websites. There are four electronic websites you can check right now on my webpage. You can start looking at some of those national scholarships on there. If you are applying for these, make sure you request transcripts and letters of recommendation ahead of time so we can get those completed. What are the colleges looking for? Your GPA, not as much your ACT right now. Many of the local ones and state schools have gone test optional. They want to look at the curriculum you've taken, where you rank in your class, the amount of activities that you're involved in, your volunteer experiences, and showing how well you can balance academics and other things outside of class. If you're planning to play a sport in college, NCAA and NAI both have clearing houses you need to come do this through. If you're planning to play, you must register with either NCAA at eligibilitycenter.org or the NAIA at playnaia.org. There'll be a processing fee for these. Now, if you have to have that ACT waiver, they can waive this but you also need to make sure you are sending your scores directly to them on the ACT scores. They will not take those from our transcripts. You need to notify myself or the athletic director at that time to let us know what, that you're doing this so we can make sure we get everything sent in. Final thing for the seniors, make sure you are registering on parchment.com. Parchment.com is how we send transcripts out through the year. Decker requires us to send these electronically. It's a free service during your senior year, so make sure you get registered on there. We do caution you to not use a Hardin County Schools email address, as those will be deactivated after graduation, so use an outside email address when you set this up. Complete your application on Parchment at www.parchment.com, and you can begin to order those transcripts. And we get those out. Those are sent out first thing every morning as they are ordered, and any transcripts can be sent to from Central to any school you're planning to go to. Now that's a lot of information we've tried to get out to you in a quick time. The last thing we want to talk about is recommendation letters. There's a senior fact sheet on my webpage. You can download that. If you are doing any kind of recommendation letter, we need that filled out. That lets me know what you want me to be able to say about you in the letter. So the more information you can give me to work with, the better we can get that out. Need at least a week's notice for the letters, although two weeks is even better. But if you do that fact sheet ahead of time, I can save that. You just need to let me know about a week ahead of time. You're going to need a letter coming up. We can get that completed for you. Also, want to let you know if you're asking for teacher recommendations, keep in mind they can use a little more of a time frame because they're going to be doing a lot more grading and having to get things in. So a little more time on the heads up is a good thing for them. Seniors, want you to have a good senior year. Hope we can get things more back to normal. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Hello, seniors and parents of seniors at Central Hardin High School. My name is April York and I am the senior sponsor. My responsibility is to take care of all of the fun social activities that we do to celebrate our seniors here at Central in their final year of high school. So the first thing we want to talk about is senior dues. What are they? How do you pay them? And what are their purposes? So senior dues are $40. Students have to pay their senior dues to participate in those social activities. So to come to things like senior movie night, um, senior dues include your prom ticket, senior night, uh, we order senior t-shirts for everyone that pays their senior dues. Those are the things that senior dues are required for. Senior dues are not required for graduation. Everyone participates in the graduation ceremony no matter what. 
Um, so those students that want to participate in those social activities can pay their dues to me in my classroom, room 218. If you're an off-campus student, you're welcome to pay your senior dues when you come to one of our fall activities, senior night or senior movie night, or um, come and pay them at the front office or come see me after school. We don't want financial um, hardship to be something that keeps anybody from participating in an activity that they would like to. So if that is an issue for your family and that's the reason you can't pay your senior dues, please just contact me um, either in person or by email and we'll work through that. And we don't want that to keep anybody from participating. Uh, final information about senior dues is that if you write a check, that should be made out to Central Hardin High School. So let's talk about what some of those social activities are. Our first um, senior activity here at Central is going to be Senior Movie Night. That's going to be held Saturday, September 11th. It's going to be in the Central Harden Athletic Complex. We're going to have an outdoor movie like we did last year, but due to our construction, it's not going to be a drive-in. Um, so bring a blanket, bring uh, some snacks if you like, and we're going to sit on one of the fields and watch a movie. Uh, seniors are voting for what movie that they want to see. The gates for that will open at 745 and our movie will start at 815. And again, that's Saturday, September 11th for senior movie night. The next big gate date is actually thinking about ordering caps and gowns. So on Friday, October 15th, during school around our flex time, uh, a representative from Jostens, which is the company that we order our cap and gowns from, will be here to talk to all of the senior students, students only, about ordering caps and gowns. But those of you who are off-campus students in the academy at EC3, try to make a plan, put October 15th on your calendar to come to our senior class meeting about ordering caps and gowns. And then the students will bring the information about that home to you parents. And the next Friday, October 22nd, our representative from Jostens will be back during lunchtime from 11.30 to one for the seniors to order their cap and gown from him. Online ordering will also be available. So if you're an off-campus student or you happen to be absent on the 22nd, don't feel like you've missed your only chance. But that'll be the two days that we'll have a representative from the company here present and I can always help you with your cap and gown ordering as well. And then all of our caps and gowns, which are custom made, they have a Central Harden logo on them, will be shipped to the school in late April, early May, and then I'll reach out to you and let you know when they're here and we'll distribute those to the members of the senior class. Again, if a financial hardship keeps your family from being able to order your own cap and gown, please just come talk to me. We have things that we can do to help take care of that. We want everybody to be able to participate in the graduation ceremony. So please don't let that stop you from participating. Um, our next senior event that'll happen in late October, early November will be senior night. We're still working on an exact date for that. We'll communicate that date when it's there. Um, senior night is when we announce the senior superlatives, who those are. Uh, and we'll also have some sort of social event. Due to our current health and safety guidelines, we're not anticipating that that will be a dance like it has been in the past. And we're gonna have the senior class officers help plan what we're, we can do under our current guidelines to keep everybody safe, but also celebrate the class in the fall. And then our big date is mark your calendars for April 30th. April 30th will be senior prom. It will be at Pritchard Community Center, right down the 62 here, and prom is from 8 p.m. to midnight. Paying your senior dues is part of your prom ticket, um, but you'll have to come pick up an actual physical prom ticket ahead of time. And we'll be looking for more information about prom and picking up prom tickets and all of that to be communicated to the senior class around spring break. Uh, another thing that sometimes people have questions about is the date of graduation. That graduation dates are set by the Board of Education in the spring, typically at their March meeting. So we don't know that date yet, but once we do, Mr. Adams and I, Mr. Isaacs, will communicate that to the seniors and their parents. Uh, and then also related to that project graduation is coordinated by Ms. Emily Wortham. Her email's on the PowerPoint if you're a parent and you would like to reach out to her about donating or volunteering to help make Project Grad a success this year. So finally, that was a, a lot of information in a short period of time and we have other exciting things happening for seniors here at Central as well. We just wanted to hit the high points. So I wanna make sure everybody knows how they can keep up to date with the activities that we have happening. We do have a senior activities webpage. You can get to it at bit.ly slash chseniors. If you're on Instagram, you can follow our class of 2022 Instagram account at chseniors. You can also sign up for reminds from me about senior activities. Those codes um, are on the screen. Like Mr. Adams said, there are limits. So we have separated out alphabetically. Please join the correct account. 
You may also want to sign up to get the daily announcements emailed to you if you're a parent, um, and you can do that on the school website. And then students, it's really important to check your student email. We'll be sending out information to you at your student email, and if you have not yet met a deadline, like perhaps you haven't ordered your cap and gown, um, I'll be sending out more specific emails to people uh, who have not done things that are important for them to do to be able to participate in our senior activities and not miss out on anything. So, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Again, my name is April York. I'm the senior sponsor. My email is april.york at harden.kyschools.us. Please do know that I am a classroom teacher though, so if you call the school during school hours, it's unlikely I'd be able to speak to you on the phone. Please feel free to leave a voicemail message and I'll get back to you, but email's the best way to reach me since I'm teaching during the day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay in tune with your high school. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tony Wiley, and I'm an outreach counselor with KIA, Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority. Big old mouthful, so we go by KIA. And today I want to talk about the senior timeline and how to pay for college or whatever kind of extra education they're going to be doing after high school. So who are we? Well, we're the folks that we're probably most known for, the keys money. We help distribute the keys money, that money they make for good grades while they're in high school. And we have a lot of publications like this one, the College Circuit. This is a great publication because it kind of gives a timeline of things they can do every year in high school, but it also shows the grant money they can receive from the federal and the state. It goes over the keys money. And in the back, we've got a glossary section that is super helpful because sometimes I will admit when you talk to financial aid offices, it's like they're speaking a foreign language. So I think this book is super helpful. We have publications and we have 13 outreach counselors like myself. So we cover the whole state and we're gonna be in and out of the schools, especially in October. Most of the schools will have us in there to help with the FAFSA night, that free application for federal student aid. So we do the publications, we help distribute money, and we have outreach counselors that come out and talk to your students. All right, so some of the programs that we have going on throughout the school year, just to kind of give a heads up on what could be happening at your school, and you may want to go to the school website to see what they do have, but a lot of the college stuff is pushed into the fall now, which seems crazy, I know, to do everything in the fall, but it really lets us get a chance to get the ducks in a row so that come a year later, next August, they have a real good understanding of where they wanna go, what they're gonna do, and how everything is gonna be paid for. So one of the first things that will be happening would be the college fairs. And I know, fingers crossed with COVID, we will be having one in Hardin County at EC3. I believe it's Monday evening on September 20th and we'll have at least 40 colleges there. That is a time where the colleges are saying hello to your students. Then, a little bit later, we're gonna be saying hello back. And we have a campaign called Kentucky College Application Campaign, and that's where we try to help the students apply to at least three colleges, hopefully by November. And when we say three, we're thinking like maybe a big university, it could be the community college or their dream college, wherever it is they're thinking of going. Because honestly, you don't know how the package is gonna come out till you apply to the schools, they get to know your student, and we do that financial piece. And that financial piece opens up October 1st. And again, most of us are gonna be in the schools. I know I'm gonna be in the area high schools in Hardin County, along with some of the people from Elizabethtown Community College, and I believe Campbellsville and Lindsey Wilson will also be coming to help at a lot of those events. We're just there to help your students process that financial aid piece. And then once we do all that, come around into the spring, well, before that, 
starting in probably December, they're going to be doing scholarship applications, definitely in January and February. That's when a lot of those scholarship applications happen. And then one of our other campaigns is going to be College Signing Day, or what I like to call Senior Decision Day. That's going to be in the spring, and that's when students as seniors give an intention of what they want to do after high school, whether it being going to college, to the military, or straight into the workforce, whatever they're going to do. We like to kind of make that a big deal, and that way they have intention and they just don't quit high school and think, mm, what do I do next? So we, these are some of our programs that are all designed to help students start thinking about what their future is going to be. All right, so what should students look for in a college? Well, hopefully it's going to have what they want to study. That's going to be number one. But don't be surprised if your student changes their mind because probably most college students change their mind about three to five times before they graduate. And they may come full circle right back to what they first started. But college really is a time when they can find out more about who they are and what they want to do. So it's pretty good to have a college that maybe has more than one of the things they're interested in in case they do change their mind. How long is that program going to take? How expensive is the college? How far away are they? Our students need to think, you know, if they don't want parents popping in, <laughs> it needs to be more than two hours away. And if you don't want them coming home with their laundry every weekend, probably more than two hours away. These are things to, to think about and how they want to do it. All right. Some of the colleges may have a career placement. Those are things to look at. Are they going to play in a sport? Are they doing an academic team? Do they do music? All the things that your student is looking for, it's more than just a program. You really need to start looking at what would be an ideal fit for them. And your schools, most of them will give you two days of approved leave of absence to go visit colleges. And it's just like if you were gonna buy a car, you would not drop $10,000 down and say, go buy me a car. You need to get behind the wheel, see if it fits. And our students need to do that too. Even if there's a really strong family tradition with one school, all of our kids are different. And the best way to do it is to go visit the schools. They're gonna have a lot of notions about what they wanna do. But we're really hoping our students come out more savvy because they're looking with intent on what their program is, how much is that school gonna cost, and when they go there, is it really a good fit for them? These are things we wanna do when we're looking for a college. Now, how do we pay for it? And it really breaks down to four ways. We're going to show a chart here that kind of shows some road signs. And the bottom one is federal loans. All of our students, when they do the FAFSA, are eligible for up to a $5,500 loan their first year of college. Now, that can seem like a lot of money or not nearly enough money, but we put it on the bottom because we're hoping loans will be the last thing that they do. Then there are scholarships. Now, when we say scholarships, I always heard that money was left on the table, and I never believed it until I got this job. In my first year, there were 500 Gear Up scholarships for $1,000. Do you know how many were awarded? 394. That means 106 students could have written their name on a paper and done a paragraph, and they would have had $1,000. And when I asked the counselors why didn't they do it or why the students didn't do it, and they said, well, hmm, I don't know, I didn't want to write an essay or I was looking for something bigger. I can tell you it takes pieces. It can be a lot of little scholarships that you add together combined with working at the college. That's called work study. And when your students fill out the FAFSA, I recommend checking, yes, I'm interested in work study. It does not promise them a job and it does not mean they have to take it. But if they don't at least say they're interested, if they say, I don't know, they'll run out of jobs before they get to them. But having a job at the college is a great way to build up experience, start networking, and they get paid for it. So that's a good thing. Lots of ways to pay for college, and it takes pieces on all of it. So we're going to look some more about how to do that. And then the top one that we have there would be grants. Now, I like to think G for gift, G for grant. We don't have to pay those back. And when we do the FAFSA, that is the number one way to tap into that grant money. And truly in our state right now, in Kentucky, whether your family has a lot of money or a little bit of money, there are ways for our students to go to college free. Because we have this grant money, we have scholarship money out there, and if they truly want college, there's a way to find it. Now, all of those are listed in this college circuit, and we're gonna look at those in a second. 
Okay, so where does this money come from? Part of it comes from the government. So as soon as we hit the submit on the FAFSA, it's gonna show us how much grant money they might receive from that. Now, the nice thing about the federal Pell Grant is it doesn't run out and it's good anywhere in the United States. And if they even get $1 from the Pell Grant, which they'll get more than that, but even if they got $1 all the way up to the 6,500, that means they get all of the state cap grant. So we have government, the federal, the state, and then there's institution. It could be the college themselves, they have money to help the students. It could be where you work. Your company may actually have a scholarship and you don't realize it because, well, maybe there haven't been any seniors for a while. Maybe your church is looking for a way to help students and maybe they didn't have a scholarship before, but you know, you could ask them and maybe they could start one. And same thing with your company. If they haven't had that and they're looking for a way to give back to the community, scholarships could help out with that. And then there's military benefits. Now the military, I'm not an expert on the military, so I can't really say um, on everything, but I will say if one of the parents have served in the military, they may have benefits that could go to their children. We have a friend that had a dad with four kids each child got one year of complete college paid for through his military benefits. The other thing is your student may be considering going into the military because they would receive that benefit directly. Um, they just need to really talk to people that are maybe already in the military. I love our military and the things they do, but it's not like getting a job at Walmart. If they decide to quit, you don't get to quit the military. So they really need to have good conversations about what all that commitment would mean. All right, again, all the benefits there with the military and the different ways they have it with the ROTC, things like that. Good information to check into. Private scholarships, we put out a book every year called Affording Higher Education. Now it's a big fat book, so we don't mail it to all the students, but every high school has it in their library and in the guidance counselor's offices. It's in the public library and it breaks down every county and any scholarships that we've been told about, we have listed in there. It also lists the colleges and scholarships they've told us about. It's a good idea to look at that early because that way you can have an idea of when those deadlines are coming and what the amount might be. And even if it's a scholarship you think, mm, I don't know if we'd get it, apply for it because you might be the only one applying for it, which means your student could get that and you just don't know till you try. I had a young girl that didn't get a scholarship earlier this summer, and I saw her at the high school and she said, I'm so glad you told me to keep trying because she, she did, she threw it out to other places and she ended up getting a really nice scholarship somewhere else, even though she was rejected on the first one. So try, the worst they can say is, no, you didn't get it, but you might. So scholarships are a great way to look at paying for school. All right, so what is the FAFSA? It's a weird thing to say, FAFSA, but it stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and it is free. So if at any point you start trying to do the FAFSA and you see they, they want you to send money, back out because you've gone to a different website because it truly is free. And I will admit it used to be a hair pulling experience when my son was in there. Literally, I wanted to throw the computer out the window because we got locked out, but they have improved it so much. We can do it online and they have made tagging it where you can get in and out so much better. So before you actually start the FAFSA, things that you're gonna need to have for that would be your taxes from the year before. So they're gonna be using the year 2020 taxes which is great because once you get into the FAFSA form, it's gonna let you link over to the IRS and just pull all that information in. We don't have to guess about it anymore. We don't have to try to calculate things. It just reaches over and pulls it over. And so you're gonna to need to know your student social and of course the parent social. And it's good to have that tax information handy because we do want it to mirror it. Like when you put in the street address, it does have to match. If, if your accountant spelled out street, you have to spell out street. It's got to mirror it. But once it does, you'll know it and you click transfer and boom, it all goes over. But before you even start the FAFSA, you need to make an ID, an account. It's just like if you're doing online banking or Amazon or iTunes or any of the places that we do our business online, it's the same thing. So a parent, one of the 
parents has to make an account and the student has to make an account. Both of them will have that. And now they've got it so easy you can do it on your phone. And I love that students can do it on their phone because they're not going to lose their phone. And when they need to have important messages sent to them, it's going to come straight to that phone. So it's really a good way to keep them more informed on how things are processing. Now, when we help, we're going to do it on a laptop because we need bigger, bigger vision. I can't see very well on their phones, but we do want them to tag it. So when they make that ID, they're going to need to have know their social security, they need their own phone number. So I know a lot of times parents want to use their phone number and their emails for everything. You are going to use it for your account because one of the parents has to have their phone and their email and the student has to have a separate phone and a separate email. And the beautiful part about that is you're going to get a code that tags it that says, yes, this is really my phone. Yes, this is really my email. And that way, they don't have to remember what their username is, okay? They are going to need to remember their password, but at least they don't have to try to remember how they listed their username because if they forgot, they can tag either the email or the phone, get a new code, and get right back in there. That is a beautiful thing. Now, we don't want our students to use their high school email, though, because once they graduate, that's going to go away. They need to have a Gmail or Yahoo or something like that. Okay, so... Fixing that up, and then they're going to need to answer some security questions. Those are usually um, case sensitive when you fill that out. And I try to pick one word answers that will not change. If we go by my favorite, if they kill off my favorite guy in a TV show, it might not be my favorite TV show next year. So I would try to pick things that are one word that won't change. Dad's middle name, mom's maiden name, different things like that. But once you do it, then as long as you can have that same phone number or email, you're not going to get locked out, and it's very good. All right. When we hit that submit, it is going to let us know what the expected family contribution is. And that doesn't mean the number they show is something you're going to write a check for. It just wants to know, are there a lot of resources there or not enough resources there? Okay, and so that's all it's looking for. And once we do this then it's going to open up either grants or it could open up the scholarship. It, it's going to open things to help them be able to go to school. All right. It's looking at the cost of the school, meaning the tuition, the cost of the classes, and room and board, meaning are they going to live there? Are they going to live at home? And they have to eat, right? And it's going to calculate in and out even if they're living at home because they know you still have to feed them and keep a roof over their head. Those are direct costs. And then they have indirect, which could be transportation back and forth, the books, fees, different kind of things like that. Once they figure that, they're going to look at the college they're going to, see what kind of assistance might be available with mom and dad, and then that's going to leave the financial need. And we're going to show these little um, tubes to compare the types of schools in a minute, and it's really helpful to see that. All right, sometimes parents get pretty um, wound up about what's an asset. If it asks you, are your assets more than, say, 10000 it does not include your home because they would not expect you to sell your home for your kid to go to school, right? So that's not an asset that they're going to count. They are going to look at if you have CD investments that are not part of your retirement. And again, anything that's a pension or retirement, they don't want you to cash that out for your child. They know you're going to need that, all right? But let's just say you have some CD saved up, a big certificate of deposits or stocks that you're playing with. That would be an asset rental properties, vacation properties, those are going to be considered assets. But when you look at this chart we're going to be showing on the screen, it's mainly going to go by your income. So for example, if your income for the home is 20000 or less, they're not even going to look at your assets at all because they know 20000 isn't a whole lot of operating money for a home to get by on, right? Same thing with 35000 um, and they wouldn't even look at your assets unless it was well over sixty or a hundred thousand. Again, not counting your home. So don't be afraid of the assets questions. And there's always a little question mark you can click on, and it'll give you more information about that. Okay. All right. So we had this big push starting October first to do the FAFSA, and then it's like we've we've been visiting colleges, we're applying to colleges, we do the FAFSA, and then what? 
It's kind of like crickets. Nothing happens for a little bit, but stuff is happening behind the scenes, okay? You're going to receive a SAR, which means student aid report, and you're going to see it like when you click on that to submit. You won't be able to go back in for three days, but after three days, you can pull it up and view that, and they're going to mail you one or email you and showing that how much grant money they think that you're going to be eligible for, okay? That is going to be sent to all of those colleges. Now, if you hurry up and do this October 1st, UK, Western, they're not sending an award letter next week, right? Because they're getting thousands and thousands of these. You may not hear from the college till January, maybe December. It could be a few months later, okay? But it's really important we get this in early. And then ultimately the college will send you an award letter explaining this is what we cost, this is how much we think that you can get in grants and scholarships, the keys money, all of that is gonna show on there. And then you'll see what the, the gap is, what the need is. Don't freak out if they don't come for a while. And if you get it and you're missing, say, a baseball scholarship, and you know that coach has told your student they're gonna get it, don't freak out. It just means the coach hasn't talked to the financial aid office yet. So the award letter is kind of a thing in motion until they're ready to actually enter into the college. But it lets you know where you're standing and it gives you room to say, hmm, we're close, but not quite close enough. Now, if you've been having in 2020 really good income and then suddenly because of COVID or whatever reason, now you're not, we're still gonna have to use that 2020 income. But once you do that, you can contact the college directly and say, we might need a professional judgment because we've had this huge change. Maybe a partner has passed away. Maybe your company closed and they're not even around anymore. So there are reasons why we would need to do that professional judgment. And it's okay because the colleges know that that could happen and they will work with you because they want to help your student the best way that they can. All right, you may have heard of being selected for verification. Don't panic over that. That just means they're double checking and they need to. We want our government to double check before they start handing out thousands here and there and everywhere. We need to know that it's supposed to go where it's supposed to. But sometimes there are valid errors. Just this summer at University of the Cumberlands, I met with triplets, three of them, and they each filled out the FAFSA differently. <laughs> and so two, one, one had it correct, two were verified because it recognized Mm, something's not quite right. And it was where the students had listed maybe one of the parents who was on disability, they listed that as wages and it's not wages. So the FAFSA is determining where that money's coming in from and where it should go. We had a young man that lived with us and his mother was a, a waitress and he listed her tips as he put, it was supposed to be 1200 point something and he did the point something something and it made it look like she made 123,000, okay? So it definitely flagged him for verification. So if you're verified, don't worry about it. It just means we have to double check it and make sure there's not a mistake. And again, outreach counselors like me, we're gonna be around the schools and we'll set dates that we come in and we can help with those verification. The good news is Kia, Kentucky Higher Education Assistance Authority does the verification for a lot of the schools in Kentucky and we've made it so simple now. It'll tell you what you need to do and you just scan it and upload it. It's not like the days where we had to do all the extra paperwork and make copies and get it all in. Now you just scan and upload and it's super simple. All right, when we hit the submit, this is show me the money and it's in this book on pages 18 and 19. As soon as we hit that submit, we're gonna see that federal Pell Grant, and this year it's up to 6,000, I think 495. A lot of money. If, if things are really tough at home, your student might get that whole amount, which means they got a free ride at Elizabethtown Community College and they're getting money back, okay? If they're going to Western or something, we're building on it. They might not get all of that. They might get part of it, okay? But if they get any of that, then they also get the state grant. The CAP grant now has gone up. It used to be 2,000, now it's 2,200 if they're going to a community college and 2,900 if they're going to a university. And if your student is interested in a private college, we also have the KTG grant, which you might not get any of the federal Pell, which means you're not getting the CAP grant. That was the case for our son, two parents who worked and one child, we didn't get those, 
but he did get the Kentucky tuition grant right at 3000 to help go to a private college. And believe it or not, both times my son uh, first out the gate, it was cheaper to go to St. Catherine College, a private college, than even the community college. And then when they closed, it was still more affordable to go to a large private college than it was to a state university. You just don't know till you fill these things out. So that's why we do it early. We can double check and figure out where we want to go. All right, and then uh, here's what's great in our state right now. Say your family, your student doesn't qualify for any of that money, but maybe they don't want a four-year degree. Maybe they want something that's going to be quicker. We call it the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, and that's targeted toward five areas like health sciences, computers and business, transportation and logistics, construction and manufacturing. And let me tell you what, with some of those technical jobs, they can make upwards of 60000 with a two-year degree. And even if they didn't want to go two years, they could do certifications. And this Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship will fill the gap of what other money they didn't get, up to about 4000 So truly, whether your family has a lot of money or little money, we've got some way to help pay for at least up to two years of school in college, depending on what they want to do. Good choices out there. All right, other things that your student could be doing this year in high school, uh, we have that dual credit scholarship program, meaning they can take a class that counts both for high school and the college. One class counts for both, and our students in Kentucky get two of those, either both the junior year, both the senior year, or one of each. Um, and then we also have the Work Ready dual credit, which again are for those career technical type programs where they can have two of those free each year. So if a student started that in ninth grade and they took two of those each year, that's eight plus the other two regular dual credit, they could have a whole year of college paid for just by being in high school and taking advantage of this. So if your student hasn't already looked at it, I know we've got our fall schedule lined up, but it might be something they could think about for the spring. And don't forget about the keys money. The keys money is in the middle of our book where the staples are, pages 22 and 23, right there. And that's a beautiful thing because our students earn money for good grades while they're in high school. They do have to have at least a C plus average to get 125, all the way up to 500 if they make straight A's. And the beautiful thing is when they graduate, we're going to add all that together plus a bonus for their ACT. And that's how much they get each year of college. So let's say they got that full grant and they're going to the community college. They would actually get their keys money back to help with books, fees, car payment, gas, insurance, whatever they need to help them get through college. All right, there is a way to get a bonus, and that is with the AP class, uh, advanced placement. If a student takes an advanced placement class and at the end of the school year they pay for and take that test and pass it, then they are going to get college credit. So that's a great thing, and that applies to anybody. But if they've also qualified for free or reduced lunch while they're in school, then they could get a bonus, all right, anywhere from two to three hundred dollars. Now, the great thing about this is, let's say your student has never been on free or reduced lunch till their senior year, and they took those AP classes last year. If they qualify, we'll go back and tag that bonus. They don't have to be, um, if they're on qualified free or reduced lunch at any time in high school, any year they do the AP is going to qualify and pop in there. Here's some other things. Now, I know a lot of people, uh, their pride, they don't want to do that. And if your school, like the whole school, is getting free or reduced lunch, that's not the same thing. That's a broad thing the county is doing. You have to do this paperwork, and you can get it from the counselor office or the family youth services. And it, it's short. It just talks about what's going on financially in your home. Just it, is it tough? And if it's tough... I would do that, especially as a senior, because it lets them take the ACT test two more times free. It waives all the college application fees, which our community colleges are free to apply to. And a lot of schools will waive it if you come and visit or you apply early. But if you have this waiver, it, it takes that away. So they, they're not even going to have to pay a fee. So it, can, it has advantages. If, if that's a thing that's possible, I would maybe try to do that. And the AP bonus, that could really kick up a lot of money. All right, so how to use the keys? Well, it's mostly here in Kentucky because it's from the Kentucky Lottery. So it's for our students going to our schools. But if they pick something that we don't have and it's offered in one of our neighboring states that we have an agreement with, 
we can transfer the keys money there. So that's one thing. Now they get the keys money four years in a five-year window from the time they graduate. Now if they go into military, we're gonna set that clock back later, but they do get it four years in a five-year window or until they get their bachelor degree, okay? So that's a good thing. How do they get it? Well, it's automatic. When they actually enroll in the college, after they, like a couple weeks into college, we're gonna send the money directly to the school. So that's good. And again, if your student has more money going there from scholarships and grants and whatever, than that school costs, they're gonna get that keys money given back to them to help out however they need it. All right, and they will have to keep their grades up good while they're in college to keep that money coming every year. Now, here's another thing that's new in our state. Let's say your student does not want to go to college, no more book learning. They can use their keys money now for an apprenticeship program, all right? It does have to be an approved one, and I know that we've been increasing how many of those programs are out there because they can use this money for their uniform, their tools, and some of those technical programs can be pretty expensive with the tools and even transportation getting back and forth. They do need to let the counselor know when they graduate where the, which way they want to do it, if they want to use it to a college or if they want to use it to uh, go toward an apprenticeship program. All right, the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, that's the one. They're, they're getting the dual credit Work Ready if they're doing something technical in high school, but after high school, if they don't receive any of the free grant money or enough of the free grant money, this scholarship kicks in to fill the gap. Now our keys money is gonna be applied to it, so it's like fill the gap of what they don't have enough for to help pay. So that's what this is gonna come into. And you can go to our website and look under scholarships and you can plug in ECTC. I'm gonna say ECTC had the most work ready scholarship dollars in the state last year because they have so many great programs there. So you can click in and put manufacturing and you'll see all the different certifications, the different type of welding, engineering, robotics, leadership, management. There's all kinds of things under each of these fields. So spend some time looking at it because it's pretty amazing what they have. All right. And that one, uh, the, the dual credit work ready is open while they're in high school, but the one for after high school doesn't open till May 1st. So don't like be looking for it and it's not there. It's for people going to college this year, all right? Okay, federal loans. We know our students have borrowed a lot of student loan money. That's why we're doing things earlier. We're trying to help them find a way to make their college dream possible without having to borrow money. So sometimes it's necessary, but not always, and when they can borrow up to 5,500, part of that would be subsidized, meaning if they borrow 2,000 over four years, they're gonna owe eight and no extra interest until after they finish. The unsub means that if they borrow the 8,000, they're gonna owe 8,000 plus the interest. So we're gonna look at that work award letter and see how you can um, react to that, okay? Here's a case study, and I love this. This shows a family of four where the oldest parent is 46, and we've got one in middle school, and we have a senior getting ready to go to college. All right, these tubes, you're gonna see, it shows that community college is costing over 15,000. They don't, don't have a heart attack, they don't. The tuition is gonna run about 4,000, but they're figuring in how much will it cost for them to eat, to have insurance, health insurance, car insurance, all of those things are roof over their head. If they're living at home, you are helping with that. So let's say the EFC estimated family contribution came out to be 2,400. It does not mean that you're writing a check for 24,000. If they're living with you, you are covering that cost already because of all the things you're providing for them. But with that EFC, it means they are gonna receive 4,000 from the federal Pell Grant. Okay, that's about the cost to go to that school in tuition, but not the other part. Then when you look at the four-year public schools, they're showing a rate of about 24, 26,000. Um, that unfortunately is true if they're living on campus, okay, but nobody pays that. And then with the private colleges over 35,000, again, nobody is gonna pay that. So we're seeing where the Pell goes across to all three types. And because of that, here's that state cap grant. 2200 for a community college, 2900 for the bigger schools. And then for the private college, they get that KTG grant, that 2900, all right? So we're building up how much they need. Now, 
there's the keys money. We're just throwing in an estimate of about 1500 They can max out at 2500 and if they qualify for those AP bonuses, I've seen students that have over 3000 a year. Okay, our son had 1600 We were thrilled with it. We thought he did a great job. Okay, you can, you can see that definitely with the community college, they've got more money than it costs for tuition, but all that other money is going to help for other things they need. Now, this, the institutional loan, that's where our private colleges really kick it up because they have endowments and things to help. So they could get an athletic scholarship, an academic, maybe a program of interest scholarship. There's all kinds of things they can throw in there. And of course, our public schools and community and big universities do that too. And then we have loans. Now, what is surprising is with the one with the Kentucky community colleges, they have more money than it costs to go there, but they could still be offered a loan. They don't need that loan. Exit out because they don't need to take that, right? But with the public and the private, they might need it or they might need part of it. Just because they don't get enough write off doesn't mean they can't go to college. We know that they can work on weekends through their senior year. They can work full time in the summer. There are ways that they can build that money up. I like to tell our seniors if they let their family know what they want to do, they could get three hits of money because they could get their birthday, Christmas, and graduation. And you know, relatives want to help the families go to college. And instead of just buying a t-shirt or something that, you know, maybe they like, maybe they wouldn't, helping with their college dream could be a real possibility. That's why we do this early, so we can get an idea of what do we need to do to make their dream come true. All right, and then a remaining gap. And again, with these award letters, they can be a little bit confusing when you see it because you're not really sure, is there a gap and is that a hard cost or like a probable cost? All right, so here's a sample of an award letter for a private college showing 34000 The first one is that federal Pell Grant. So half is in the fall, half is in the spring. Hallelujah, we're going to accept it right? The CAP grant, the KTG grant, think G for gift, G for grant. We don't pay those back. We want to accept those. Keys money, yay, we accept that. Now, the institutional aid, we want to watch that because um, they need to make sure if they're getting that, what do they have to do to keep it coming? Like my son was a mascot. He had to perform at the ball games and he got it every year, right? So we're going to accept that. Now is where we get into those loans. So say they don't really need that loan. I would reject the unsub first because that carries interest. And you can mark the subsidized. Our son was going to live at home, so he saved money by not being on campus. He didn't need that full 3500 He reduced it down to 2000 This is a thing in motion, and you have the right to work with it and work with the college, communicate with them so that they can help you fine-tune it so it's, it's the right way for your student. But even with this one, they're not going to show it, but it's got a gap of 2400 What do you do with that gap? Again, big graduation party. Uh, work on the weekends. Work in the summer. Find a way. Our students can own it. They can try to make that money, make that gap up, right? Okay, so private scholarships, employer benefits, tuition payment plans. As a parent, you could say, well, I'm going to pay, you know, $1,000 a semester. So instead of making a loan, which affects your credit, could have interest, you could work out a payment plan with a college. I will say though, with the payment pa plans with the college, they want you to have that paid before they're going to let them register for the next semester. So you do need to stay on top of that. All right, and then there's alternative loan options. With Kia, we have the Advantage loan, and we have the same benefits as the federal, but um, we have a better interest rate. So you definitely want to shop and check everything out. Again, loans are the last thing. If you have to do it, find all the other options first because really there is money that doesn't get claimed every year. And we're going to have scholarship workshops too around the high school. So definitely be checking that out. All right, in the back of this book is a college financial plan. And it's a good idea to just compare the colleges. You may think this is going to be the best bet, you but, but you might find out your dream school is only $1,000 higher, but they graduate people so much sooner. A bigger part of their body finishes a four-year degree in four years, so it could be worth finding where can I find the extra 1000 to make that dream school a possibility. It's just a way so that our students can be so much more grounded 
and savvy as they move to that next step after high school. We do have the Kentucky 529 saving plan. So um, if that's something that grandparents can do, parents can do, you can look into that. That's connected at KentuckySaves.com is where you can find more information about that. And I wanna show you real quickly just how many colleges we have in our state. So you can find Hardin County, we've got four-year publics, we have private colleges, the community colleges, technical schools, Bible colleges, and a, a wide group of other ones. We have like 76 brands of colleges in our state. Your senior is gonna get a book called Getting In, which is gonna have a snapshot page of all of those colleges in the state. And again, we're gonna have a college fair, we hope, on Monday, September 20th at EC3, where they can meet about 40 of these different colleges and start having those conversations. Find out, do they have the program they'd like? What, what do they cost? What are ways to help pay for it? A great way to do that. All right, again, remember when your students register for cl classes for college, it takes 15 to finish, 15 uh, credit hours a semester, makes them full time so that they get 30 hours a year because most bachelor degrees need 120 hours. If they're doing those dual credit or work ready dual credit, they're already covering some of those hours. So that gives them more wiggle room to change their mind when they get to college. All right, getting the facts is a shopping program you can do under our website, kia.com. It lets you shop six colleges at a time and it just gives you a comparison of what the tuition would run, the housing, maybe even the books. It gives you a breakdown of what the student body looks like. Uh, my son, when he first started talking about going to college, he said, told me where he's gonna go. And I'm like, really, why? And he said, because the counselor said that they have 76% women there. I'm like, okay, he's a guy. He's looking for where the girls are, right? But then when we did the shopping program, it showed that most of those women were my age not where he wanted to go. So this Getting the Facts is a good shopping program. Our website again is kia.com. We've got a lot of good information in there. Those dual credit and work ready dual credit college applications are on there and the work ready after high school. About a few weeks after they do the FAFSA, you will be able to see if they've been tagged for the state grants. That will show up in there. It won't show the amount till next year though. All right, it's so easy to log in. You just go to that sign in and you're gonna set up an account, very short. If you wanna take a snapshot of this page, it's kind of a timeline for the senior year, what happens in the spring, the winter, and, and fall, and it's also in the book, so that's helpful there too. All right, we have some websites you can go to, again, if you wanna take a screenshot of that, and you can always go to Kia, our website, or reach out to the counselors, they know how to find the outreach counselors, and you may wanna text outreach to that toll-free number because we will send you timely updates. Now, we're not gonna bombard you with texts, but it's gonna ask what year your student is in and that way we can make it pertinent to what they're gonna do. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, we, we'd love to reach out and help you. Look for us coming into your high schools. We will be having the FAFSA workshops and we will be having other events for college application, things like that. Stay in tune with your high school guidance counselor and Kia is always out there ready to help. Thank you. And things like that. Stay in tune with your high school guidance counselor and Kia is always out there ready to help. Thank you. And things like that. Stay in tune with your high school guidance counselor and Kia is always out there ready to help.